Hi, my name is Mike, and in this video we're going to be doing some firmware upgrades on some of our Netgear switches. We're going to look at several different models of Netgear switch. We're going to look at the Netgear support website. We're going to perform the firmware upgrades. We're going to talk a little bit about why the upgrades are important, and we're going to just kind of walk around my home office and I'm going to show you some of the equipment that we're going to be working with. To start, you can see my web browser is on netgear.com forward slash support. You can get to pretty much any of the downloads shown in this video by going to Netgear's support website. You can also get to this page by going to support.netgear.com. Netgear makes many different models of network hardware and as you can see down here at the bottom you'll see they have sections for Wi-Fi, routers, home networking, mobile broadband, switches, wireless, etc. Typically the fastest way to get to your specific product is to just put the model number of your product into the search box. You can also usually get to this through Google. Uh, like for example, if you just put your model number and Netgear firmware, Google is smart enough that it should be able to take you to the correct support page for your product as well. So, to get started, let's look at some of the different hardware we're going to be working with today. You can see over here I have two Netgear switches that I'm in the process of refurbishing. This is a GS728TP and a GS752TP. The top one is a 24 port switch and the bottom one is a 48 port switch. They both have the additional four ports over there on the side for um, expansion modules. I also have a third switch that needs this firmware updated. This is over here in my home office network room. You can see, just to give you a high level overview of how a small home office network may be set up, you can see here at the top I have my wireless router access point. Just to the right of that is a temperature monitor that monitors to make sure my equipment doesn't get too hot in here. Below this I have a small patch panel, a neat patch cable management system, an additional Netgear switch, a small home office server, cable modem, PDU for power distribution, a uh, UPS in case the power should go out. You can see that's fully charged. That'll keep my equipment running in the event of a power outage for looks like roughly 30 to 38 to 40, 45 minutes. This is in a trip light network rack. Below that is my printer and a stand with some printer supplies. So this is a very small home office network as you can see here for just a few workstations and some other equipment throughout the home. For the three switches, I have each of them configured with a static IP address through their web interface. And you can see that over here in my browser, where I have the first one ending in dot two, the second one ending in dot three, and the fourth one ending in dot four. That makes it easy for me to manage uh, by having them in a sequential order like that and is what I would recommend you do with your own um, home or office networking equipment. Uh, typically I put the switches in a very low IP range and other devices that have a permanent uh, static IP address I would put in a high range for things like printers. You know, I might put those up in the you know, 200 or 2, 240 range uh, for, you know, for devices that would also need a static IP. Over here on my home router you can see this router is running DDWRT firmware and I brought this up just to show you where I have my the DHCP server configuration in the router is set to not start until it gets to 5. So my switches being at my router being at 1, my printers being at my switches being at 234 and then the start IP address range for random devices like cell phones that are brought in and put on the Wi-Fi, laptops, uh, desktop PCs, things that don't need a static IP address would all pull from in the range starting at 5 or above. That way that avoids any sort of conflicts by using static IP addresses combined with your DHCP address range to avoid any sort of address conflict. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the comments. I, you know, I'd be glad to go on into more details about this if anyone is interested in learning more about setting uh, you know, static IP addresses or IP address ranges for fixed or mobile devices. So we're going to look at each of the three switches. We'll start with dot two. 
I've already downloaded all of the firmware from Netgear's support site. There's also two tools that they have available. Let's just jump back to my desktop here real quick and you can see the icons for both of the tools. There's Netgear Switch Discovery Tool and the Smart Control Center. So actually let me just pull those up and show you what those look like. The Switch Discovery Tool is the newer of the two programs and it's got a little bit more modern interface. However, this is only for discovering switches. This will scan your local area network and show you any switches that are connected to your local area network. So you can see a nice little graphic representation of each of the three switches. Looks pretty nice. Not very functional though, unfortunately. So the second tool that they have available on their website, and this is an older tool, is this Smart Control Center. This program actually lets you make some configuration changes to the switches and you know update firmware and stuff you know through the control panel you can see over here it gives me a list of all of the firmwares that's installed on each device names locations any of this information I can program in there so it gives me a lot more information it is a little bit older program unfortunately I don't believe it's being updated anymore but it is a more powerful tool and as I mentioned before, these are available on Netgear's support website. Let's minimize that for now and pull the support site back up. You can see this purple logo here. That's the switch discovery tool. And you would just hit downloads button to download it. And for the other tool, you would go to your particular model of switch, hit the downloads button. There it is right down here under Smart Control Center on the Netgear site. For our firmware updates, we're going to start, let's start, we'll go ahead and start with uh, .2. We'll do this one through the web-based interface on this switch. The newer ones are a little bit easier, I feel, uh, than the older ones. So, we'll just go ahead, go over to the Maintenance tab. We'll click on Update. We're going to do an HTTP firmware update file type you can see you've got some different types of things if you want to load software configuration settings image one image two it does have dual firmware images so if one of them were to become corrupt it would be possible to uh, boot off of the backup image we're going to hit browse so I already downloaded all of the uh, firmware updates so this is the GS728 TPV2 we're going to go into that one's folder we're going to grab the .bix file I'm going to hit open. Over here on the right hand side there's a button for apply. You see file transfer in progress. It may take a couple minutes for that file transfer to complete and once it's done you will see where it says software file update through HTTP is complete over here on the transfer status. Next we need to reboot the switch. To reboot the switch you come over here to the maintenance reset tab. Select this device reboot box hit apply it will give you this little alert and you click OK if you could hear it in the background the switch actually beeps to tell me that it's rebooting once the switch is finished rebooting it should take you back to the device UI login screen at the dot two address in my case you can see up here in the top right hand corner that it is now showing the latest version 6.0.8.2 and we could go ahead and log in and I mentioned before I did want to tell, talk a little bit about um, why I feel like it's important to update the firmware on these switches. And you'll see along with every firmware update there's various release notes. Some are more comprehensive than others. I've seen on some devices where they'll have pages of release notes talking about all of the different you know, updates and fixes. So this typically uh, again is going to be on the support website when you hit downloads. Underneath the firmware downloads, you'll see a file, uh, a link that says release notes. And if you click on that, that's going to take you to this next page where this shows you some of the release notes. And as I said, this, this could be very brief or it could be very lengthy. You know, it, again, it just depends on the co how comprehensive that specific update is and how many notes the developers feel like including. So for this particular update, it just states that it contains various security vulnerability fixes and enhancements. Internet security is so important these days and every day. Uh, I cannot stress enough, you know, how important it is to maintain a good patch management, firmware updates, 
any device is vulnerable these days. You might see on the news where you know home thermostats, Nest thermostats, um, devices like that will be compromised. Um, you know, even home printers can be compromised. Basically, anything that's an internet-connected device um, is, could potentially be a uh, a target for hackers. So you want to just you know in install any Windows security updates, software updates, and uh, again the firmware updates on all of your home devices, your printers, your network router, your switches, thermostats, um, internet connected security cameras. Uh, there's been vulnerabilities where that will allow hackers to you know watch inside your home on your own home cameras because of a vulnerability in the device. So. Always update your firmware, always install your security patches, always change your default passwords. Don't use the default password for a device because that is well-known information published everywhere on the internet. So, let's look at our next, our next switch now. We're going to look at the 728. just want to show you one other thing I like about some of these Netgear switches. If you have the switches stacked, um, which is a certain way of interconnecting them, you can see a pretty cool device view where it actually shows you all of your switches and how everything is connected. I don't have mine set in that mode at home, but at some of the offices I do, I will stack the switches and you can see the status of all the switches on this type of display. It will give you a visual representation, you know, a picture showing every single switch, what it's doing, how many devices are connected, the speed of each port. Just kind of a neat thing. So, for switch number two, we're going to update that through the web UI. So you see this is a little bit uh, different appearing user interface for this older model type of switch you would go to the maintenance tab and then download HTTP. I know this sounds kind of counterintuitive think of it as you're downloading a file to the switch and you're uploading a file from the switch uh, it's backward to me too, so I don't know why Network Netgear did it that way. We'll hit browse. We'll select the firmware file for this switch. The 728TP. This is a .ROS file. They call it an archive. We're going to hit apply. And in the bottom right, it starts the file transfer. Once that file transfer completes, you should see this archive file download through HTTP completed successfully checkbox. And same as with the other model switch, you would come over to the reset tab, reboot the unit, hit apply. It may take a few minutes. For the second switch, you'll see it actually did something kind of interesting where it uploaded the new firmware onto the second image. So as I said before, these are dual image devices so it gives you the option to roll back to a second to a backup firmware should something happen to the primary firmware and I'll just show you that configuration screen here real fast it's under the maintenance file management you have the dual image status which shows you the older firmware and then the newer firmware the dual image configuration tab we're gonna set image number two to be the primary one we're gonna activate it we're gonna apply then we're going to reboot the switch again. Once the switch has finished rebooting, you may be asked to create a new password. Since I noticed in this case, the previous firmware version wasn't as secure with its password policies, and the newer firmware requires a more complex password, which is good. You want definitely want to use a complex password for your critical network equipment. So once you create a new password, you're logged into the switch, you can now see that we are on the most recent firmware version for this particular model. I'm going to minimize this window and we're going to go back to this uh, Netgear Smart Control Center where we can see that the dot two switch is on its latest firmware, the dot three switch is on its latest firmware. So now the only one remaining to do is the one uh, the dot four switch which is still on 6.0.1.24 for this switch, let's try a different way. Let's try updating this switch through the Smart Control Center, just to show you a, a little bit different way of uh, performing the update. So to do that, we're going to come over to the Maintenance tab, 
and then you'll see there's two buttons for configuration or firmware. We'll go to the firmware tab. We'll select the switch we want to update. Again, we've got that button for download firmware. I still feel that's kind of backwards, but like I said before, you're downloading something to the switch. So we're going to hit download. We're going to go to the firmware, the folder for the correct firmware for this switch. We'll select the .ros file. Open. And that's asking for the password. So we need to put in the password for this current switch. And then you can see here and here at the bottom, download firmware to the selected device. Apply. So there's our current status down here at the bottom. It's at 12%. You can also see that over here on the Tasks tab, where it says it's currently in the process of upgrading the firmware. Once the firmware update is complete, the device should reboot automatically. And you can see over here that now the DOT4 device is on the same latest firmware as the DOT3 device, the 6.0.1.30. And as I mentioned before, the newer firmware does require you to create a more complex password. You can see that over here when you attempt to log into the device through your web browser that it is asking for you to create a newer, more secure password than the default password. So that's all good stuff. I hope this video has been helpful to you. We've gone over some of the reasons why you want to update your firmware and how to update the firmware on three different models of Netgear Switch. We've looked at the Netgear support website. We've updated firmware through both a web browser and through the Netgear Smart Control Center. And if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please like and subscribe to my channel. I hope to do a lot more videos on computer repairs, computer upgrades, hardware repairs, also car repairs and upgrades. And it really helps me out a lot. Thank you and have a great day and stay safe out there.